the defense's response to Carrie Morrissey's motion meltdown was, Your Honor, this case had been dismissed. And here comes Carrie Morrissey saying that she's going to relitigate the entire thing. There were appropriate points of shade where the defense pointed out that what the prosecution has done is not only bringing all the audacity to even file this motion, but it doesn't have any legal foundation. There is no basis in law for the court to be able to change their ruling when the case was dismissed with prejudice as a sanction for discovery violations. And the defense again reminded the court, who probably needs no reminding because she's lived through this, of the repeated and replete discovery violations. And the defense is like, it wasn't just the Troy Teske rounds. It was the rounds. It was the report. It was the lapel cam body cam video. It was the interview. It was all of it. It wasn't just one thing. And it was willfully suppressed, as the court said. So instead of relitigating, the defense, with constraint, went back through and said, this is why the court's decision should stand, which is exactly what's going to happen if this even gets to a hearing. The defense said, look, this uh, motion doesn't conform to any of the rules at all. The court can just strike it and be like, no. I don't think the court will strike it because the defense asked for attorney's fees to have to deal with the nonsense. And I think the court is going to be very inclined to grant attorney's fees for Baldwin having to respond to these motions, for his attorneys having to read them all and respond to them all after the case was dismissed with prejudice. I think it's a very reasonable and restrained ask, and I think it will be granted. I will be curious to see if the court will grant it and make Carrie Morrissey pay them personally or make the prosecution office pay for them. When you are sanctioned personally, there are some different implications with regard to the state bar. It can require and trigger self-reporting and things like that. But so will all the Brady List stuff and so will Carrie Morrissey's testimony. But here's the real tea from the defense's filing. They have an affidavit from Erlinda Johnson who says, no, I did not know anything about the Teske rounds. I did not leave the prosecution team because I didn't want the hearing to be public, like Morrissey said, on the stand. I left because I told Carrie Morrissey the ethical obligation of the prosecutor when they discover Brady evidence that has not been disclosed at this point is to dismiss the case. And Carrie didn't want to do so. And Erlinda said, I am not standing by this. I am walking. So the affidavit from Erlinda Johnson included in this motion was quite a surprise. But it said everything we thought Erlinda was going to say, that she fought to do the right thing. And when she was overruled by the lead prosecutor in the case, she walked away. But what we did learn is that during some of the older discovery issues that the court was quite upset with the prosecution about, Erlinda was the one who kind of came in and saved the day on those. But Carrie Morrissey told Erlinda not to respond to the defense and not to be on the phone with them. T. So... This behavior from Carrie Morrissey was ongoing, and it was to everything. No, we don't have to turn this over. No, we don't need to turn that over. Erlinda found over a thousand additional pages of documents that needed to be turned over after unredacting a 5,000-page discovery turnover to the defense. It was that redacted 5,000 pages that uncovered other reports. It's like, oh, we unredact this. Oh, it references another report. Oh, that report has to be turned over. And that was turned over to the defense on the eve of trial. With everything, no matter what you think about the defendant in this case, and there are strong opinions about Alec Baldwin, no matter what you think about Alec Baldwin, the concern here is that what happens when people don't have a fleet of nine attorneys to go through motions like this when someone like Carrie Morrissey is pulling all of the fuckery. This should not happen to any defendant. It happened to happen to a defendant with the money to fight it. And we saw that play out in court live. But this should never happen. That's why there's all the Brady discovery obligations. That's why the sanctions are so strict. So no matter what you think of Baldwin, 
This is legally the proper result. And it was incredibly and entirely avoidable. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android. 